All right, so I know a lot of you guys watching, at some point in time, you guys are gonna want a new car. Now, should you buy it? Should you borrow it? Should you finance it? Should you lease it? You know, what should you do? What's going on, everybody? Your boy Juan Valdez coming at you guys with another video. And today, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my experience and why I chose to, you know, lease my BMW. Now, to give you guys a little bit of preface, I, you know, have owned four cars now the first three were actually used cars that i paid for cash and thinking back to it it was not a very smart decision on my end but i was young and i really wanted to get a car so i ended up just doing it anyway i actually came to the conclusion to realize that uh, depending on everybody's situation determines on whether they should buy finance lease or borrow or maybe even rent a car right uh, maybe not rent or borrow, but everybody's situation determines whether they should buy, lease, or finance a car, for sure. That, that's what I came to the conclusion. There's a lot of smarter options when it comes to picking which one, but in this video, I'm gonna be going over why it made sense for me to lease it and some of the pros and cons and a whole lot more. So if you know any of you guys watching uh, are huge car enthusiasts like me and you'd like to see more car videos, maybe of like how you can get you know, uh, cars for good deals, how you can find out if it's better to own or lease or compare it to owning a car and a whole lot more. Make sure you leave me a thumbs up, leave me a like on this video. And also, you know, throughout this video, if you guys have any questions regarding anything that we go over, make sure you drop a comment. I do respond to all my comments in a timely manner, usually within 24 hours. Uh, and of course, if you haven't already, make sure you smash that subscribe button, join the V fam. Uh, to kind of get started, uh, what I do is, I, what I did is I actually put together some notes for you guys to kind of go over just some of the basic parts of you know my situation, what it might, did my situation entail, uh, maybe you guys can relate, and you know what was I doing, how much was I making, what kind of credit that I have, we're gonna cover all that stuff. So we'll jump right into my computer, and I'll be able to share all those things with you guys. So this was two years back. I had just moved to California. For those of you guys that don't know, California is on the top for one of the most expensive places to live in, specifically San Francisco. And that's actually where we moved to, uh, to do where I moved to, to do door to door sales. Again, like, you know, coming to California to do door to door sales, you know, not knowing how much money I can possibly make to go in to live to one of the most expensive places was not the best decision. But again, I was young, I did it. I figured it out. That's just, you know, part of the game. But so my situation at that time was, again, I was, you know, I obviously had rent to pay, I had other expenses, and obviously I didn't have too much money, right? Like I was making money, but not too much. I think on average, I was making like five to seven grand average on every every single month, right? And that's, you know, on a good month, maybe like 10 to 15, when I was like really grinding it and busting it, uh, that's all that's probably how much I was making but on average it was like five to seven grand for sure Right, so I didn't have too much money now I did need a car to make money So even though I didn't have too much money I needed to use whatever money I had to get a car so that actually I could actually make more money So of course going door to door I had to drive to what we call turf Which is the area we would go to to kind of prospect and you know look, look to get new customers and new leads uh, I needed a car to obviously you know drive around to do that to you know, you know get sales get get to appointments all that stuff so I needed a car to make money now I didn't want to I needed an option that made sense for my situation so obviously I didn't want to you know spend the money that I had saved up to buy a car because if I did you know potentially I wouldn't be able to pay for rent the next month so I didn't want to do that uh, also I wanted to still take advantage and do other things like you know invest in myself with you know courses and books at the time so obviously get better at sales and per persuasion because obviously that was what I was focused on at the time so I wanted to get good at it that way I can make more money within it so I didn't want to blow all the money I had into buying a car because again that didn't really make too much sense at the time I don't want to have to worry about selling or trading my car usually like if you finance a car again it's your car so selling it or trading it in can sometimes become a little bit trickier than you know compared to so if you lease a car, so I didn't want to have to worry about all that. So leasing for me seemed like I, you know, I found a website where you can, you know, for people that want to get out of their leases, you can put your car on there. And I think it's called like swap a lease. You can literally, you know, swap leases with people. So I started seeing things like that. So I figured, you know, leasing seems a little bit easier than financing. I definitely didn't want to finance to own a car because we're, I'm, you know, I'm a young guy. So for me, like I, you know, I love cars. So I probably wasn't going to want to stay with a BMW for whatever the average, you know, finance time is, which is usually like five to eight years, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think on average, you know, that's the timeline where someone, when you finance a car, it takes to pay it off and kind of own it. Five to eight years, man, come on. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching, and you know, some of you guys may be able to relate, like, that's a long time to think about being with one car. I mean, with all the cars there is in the world, I'm trying to get a Lambo. That's what I realized. So obviously, five to eight years, 
I don't know if I'll stay with my same car. So I didn't want to worry about selling or trading. Now I wanted to also leverage my money. Like I said, I wanted to still be able to invest in other things, you know, have fun with, you know, with what I was making, be able to take trips uh, at the same time and just not have to worry about, you know, missing out on other opportunities. So I wanted to have money saved up. I didn't want to put it down and tie it up in a car just because again, it didn't make sense at the time. Now also, what helped me that is that obviously you guys have seen, if you haven't already, make sure you check out some of my credit videos talking about how to build credit, but I had good credit around the time. It took me a while to build it, but I had around a 740, 742 at the time. And it was definitely, yeah, I was right around there. I had that at the time and that made it a lot easier also for me to decide, you know, which car option makes sense. Obviously, if you don't have any credit, then you may not be able to consider the leasing and financing option because those usually require a, a decent credit score and they also, you know, can depending on how, what credit you have, it may or may not make sense because if you have a really bad credit, they may charge you, first off, a huge down deposit, and second of all, huge interest rates, which will make your car or leasing or owning that car twice or almost twice as expensive. So obviously, depending on credit, it does depend on uh, you know what options you should choose for getting a car. But for me personally, I had around 740, so I actually had the option to either lease or finance a car if I wanted to. So obviously that's why I chose to lease a car because I could. The, the car I actually leased was a 2016. It had just came out, it was a sweet ride. Uh, I'll actually post a picture so you guys can see. It was clean, man, this thing was clean. Uh, I, you know, I went for a test drive, literally went in, not trying to get a car in the same spot. Usually I like to go in and you know browse my options, but I saw this bad boy. It was a blue, I'm a huge fan of blue. And I'm like, man, after we did a test drive, it was a M Sports package. So the car was, it was a 2016 BMW 328i, again, M Sports package. And this car was a beauty, you know, after I drove it first test drive, you know, instantly I knew that, you know, that was the car that I wanted. So right away that same day, I got the paperwork done and I got the ball rolling and I ended up leaving with the car that same day. But that's the car I had, it, the total net cost of the car, I have the paper here actually. 52,000, you can see it right there. So the car, the total was $52,020. That's the total cost of the car. Obviously when you lease a car, you're not leasing the entire amount of the car. You're leasing the depreciated value of the car. So uh, whatever the depreciated value is for the car within the three years that you're gonna have lease the car for, that's usually what, the, what you're financing and what your payments are based on. So for me, since I had good credit, I only had to put, I actually had the option to, you know, go with no money down, but then I would have a little bit of a higher monthly payment. But I also had the option to put down a $2,500 secured deposit. And security deposit, it's secured or security, it's one of those two. Uh, a secured deposit is basically where you put the, you know, you put this deposit down and you get it back at the end of your lease. As long as you don't have any damages in your car, that's more than the security deposit. So. Uh, you put that down, it's a little bit different than a down deposit. In the down deposit, you know, sometimes it ends up going towards, you know, the total amount you're leasing, but sometimes it doesn't. It all depends on the deal that you're getting. So down deposit, you get none of that money back. So it's kind of just like kind of down the drain. It just brings down your monthly payments a little bit, not as much. So my monthly payment came out to around $614.10. That's what I pay up to date. And for me, you know, at the time it made sense because again, I was making five to seven grand a month and I needed to you know, obviously have a car to make more money and to keep to making that same amount of money. So for me, I, you know, fit that fit into my budget and I was able to afford it. So that's what I had so far as far as the car that I lease. So now we're gonna go over, I wanted to kind of transition to going over, you know, what are the pros and cons to leasing a car? Because there are some pros and there are some cons for all the options. So specifically for, you know, when it comes down to leasing, usually some of the pros are that you're able to lease a car with little or no money down almost all the time. Like I showed you guys, I had the option to get the car for no money down, but I was gonna have a little bit of a higher monthly payment. I think it was gonna come out to around 800 bucks. For me, you know, I saw that, and I don't think uh, at the time like I was gonna be ready to consistently pay 800 bucks. So I figured, why not right now take advantage and you know put the security deposit down um, and also get a little bit of a lower monthly payment. So that's why I did it. Uh, but usually like if I really wanted to I could have gotten the car for no money down But I chose just to put something down because I got the money back and it brought down a monthly payment Again, it all depends on your credit and things like that that determines whether you have to put money down or not uh, One of the pros is again, you get to basically rent uh, I'll put you know quote-unquote rent uh, a depreciating asset uh, for me personally I don't think it's a the best idea now that I think back to it when I bought the three cars I don't know what I was thinking because my first one I think was like two grand the next one was like five thousand and the third car I got was like 
you know, maybe uh, six or seven thousand. This is one that I had saved up for the longest time. Uh, some of you guys watching may have seen my video about my biggest motivating factor, but I had saved up money since I was in middle school, you know, doing all these different things and, you know, I use the money for that, for that. And now that I think about it, it doesn't make any sense to do so. But, you know, basically the rule of thumb is once you get a brand new car, as soon as it's off the lot, it loses value all, right off the top, right? So the more expensive the car, the more value it loses. So for me, like if I would have purchased this BMW, you know, $50,000 on it, you know, it's worth, by the time I would have drove it out, it's, it would have already been worth less than what I got it for. So again, like that doesn't really make sense from a business standpoint. So obviously now I like to make a lot more intelligent decisions. So for me, the fact that I can lease or in this case rent a depreciating asset that made sense for me to do because I'm not the one that's going to be losing out on my investment right that I can afford you know six hundred dollars a month compared to you know paying fifty thousand dollars and then you know having that lose the its value day by day so that's why I chose uh, one of the another pros of you know, leasing a car is that you can easily transition into a new car because again, when you lease it, they have different options now where like you have this website called swap a lease. You can go on there and you can literally put your car up for a, a lease swap. And you know, th that's a lot, that's a lot more known to happen than, you know, having to completely sell a car once you finance it or you own it. Right. You know, taking over a lease, it's a lot more comf It's a lot more flexible or getting rid of a lease because again, you know, you're not keeping the car forever. It's usually, it's a short term. It's, you know, it's a three, usually leases are three years. So of course, like, you know, anyone can go in and out of a lease or so that's much more appealing to someone to own a car for maybe a year or two than to have to completely buy out a car or finance it for five for five to eight years. That's a lot more appealing. And again, this is not like any kind of like financial advice. Like I'm not a financial advisor. This is just based on the research, you know, kind of like the key points that I found that made sense and some of the benefits of leasing a car. I'm also going to go over the negatives, but this is just basic outline. This isn't like exact detail to detail. This is just based on research. You guys can look this up and I would recommend for you guys to look this up to learn more about it. But these are just basically, um, you know, known facts, you know, when it comes down to leasing that, you know, makes it, uh, you know, that pretty much gives it the pros about leasing. So the next pro to leasing a car is the tax, tax deductions that you get. At the time, uh, I was under a 1099 and I'm going to get more into taxes. But basically, you know, if you're under a 1099 or if you're a business owner, you get tax benefits with cars and there's different ways that you do it, right? I'm going to get more into it. I'm going to let you guys know exactly how you can do it. But the fact that I had this car and I was using it for work, you know, it went into my favor, right? Uh, the miles that I was driving and a whole lot more. So we'll get into that. I actually have a section specifically on that. But the tax deduction is huge and usually for any business owner, you know, you get the tax benefit when you lease a car. So for any of you guys aspiring entrepreneurs, maybe if you're, you know, in a, under a 1099, consider a lease uh, because you do get the tax benefits and I'll go obviously get more into that. Now the next part, the next pro about leasing a car is that it has, you have low repair costs because usually when you lease the car, like with BMW, I get warranty, right? The car is still, you know, fully covered. So oil changes, uh, pretty much any maintenance that needs, to get, that needs to get done, I just bring it into the dealership, they do it, and I'm in and out of there, like, you know, real quick, I'm in and out, you know what I'm saying, I'm right in and out. Uh, and that's one of the best parts because again, with cars like this, when it comes to, you know, more, obviously this isn't like a Lamborghini or Rolls Royce, but even like German engineered cars like this, uh, can be a little bit expensive if you have to take care of the maintenance yourself. If anything goes wrong with the engine, if anything, you know, pretty much anything goes wrong, it can be a little bit expensive. So the fact that I, or that anyone that leases a car doesn't have to take care of, you know, the maintenance and things like that is a huge help because that's one less expense that you have. So obviously that's huge. Now. To kind of go over the cons, of course, you got to have go over the cons as well. You can't just talk about, you know, the best part it's about leasing a car. Some of the cons is, of course, you don't own the car at the end of the lease. Um, if so, after you have all those payments, you know, for three years straight, you don't own the car. But of course, you know, obviously you knew that coming into a lease that you weren't going to own the car. But the upside is if you do, you know, let's say you did get attached to the car. If I got attached to this BMW, you know, this bad boy, I have the key actually right here. You know, if I got attached to this bad boy and I wanted to keep it, they do give you the option at the end of your lease to actually buy the car outright and they usually give you a deal on it. Uh, obviously, since you already had, you know, leased the car with them and you had it for that time. So they do give you a deal if you want to buy it. Uh, usually, you know, at least for me, my plans are after I, you know, finish with this lease, actually before I'm done with this lease, I really want to get the Lambo. So of course, like, uh, I'm probably not going to keep the car all the way to the end of the lease, but who knows again, you know, that's one of the cons, you, but it does, again, you do have to kind of compare it and compare and contrast it with, you know, if you want to actually own the car and some of the expenses you have later on, but that's for a whole another video. I can literally talk about, 
you know the opportunity cost and all that that comes into you if you decide to own a car and some of the different options but for now you know kind of the pros and cons of leasing the other con about leasing a car is that for some people it may not you know make sense based on how much you drive on a daily because you are limited usually to do about 12,000 miles. You can sometimes play around with it and sometimes different dealerships and different deals offer you different amount of mileage. But on average, it seems to be around 12,000 miles that you get when you lease a car. Again, for some people, it may not make sense because if you drive you know, all the time, then of course you're gonna go over that. And then the next con right here is that if you do go over that, you end up paying you know, you could end up paying fees for going over it. And usually it gets pretty expensive. It ends up being like, I think it depends on the car, but at least for the BMW that I have for that year, it comes out to like an extra 75 cents a mile for whatever I go over. So obviously that can get pretty expensive if you drive a lot. So again, that is that is a con you kind of have to watch out for. And again, like a lot of you guys, like I mentioned before, you know, another con that's people aren't a huge fan of is that when you lease a car, you do have a usually a high, a much higher interest rate than when you like finance or, you know, obviously when you buy, there's no interest because you're buying in cash, but you usually have a higher interest rate when you lease than when you finance. And that's just, you know, how it goes. But again, it does depend on your credit. So it's not like it's always going to happen, but that is usually what ends up happening with a good portion of leases. But if you, if you guys have good credit, which if you don't, you should start working on it hundred percent. You guys are going to thank me later. You know, you can use credit for multiple things, starting a business, getting a car, getting a house, tons of different options so if you haven't already started working on your credit make sure you do so i'm telling you guys you're gonna thank me later and again depending on the the, the your credit score will determine how much and if you have to put down a deposit and also again how much interest you're going to be paying so how much your uh monthly payment comes out to so uh again credit is huge uh trust me you guys are going to want to definitely be working on your credit as early as you can now the next part is pretty exciting this is the next part is going over some of the tax deductions, right? So uh, for business owners specifically, if you're working under a W-2, so a regular nine to five job, you don't really get as much benefits because again, you know, again, like you're under, you're under that W-2, so you don't really get much tax incentives or tax benefits with leasing a car. But if you're under a 1099, uh, specifically if you drive to meet with clients, if you have to drive for work for door to door, like in our, my case, you get to write off the amount of miles that you use for work, right? So that's obviously huge because, again, I was driving a majority of the time from, you know, area to area because I had to go work in one specific place. But then also the next day I had to pick another area to go work in because I can't work in that same place forever. So I had, you know, I was driving on a daily basis. So for me, that was huge for people to have that benefit. So that ended up being huge because I was able to write off a huge portion of my taxes, you know, just by you know, with the miles that I had driven because I had a lease. If I would have purchased the car, uh, again, you do get to, you know, write off a portion of it, but we're talking about leasing specifically here. So when you lease it, you definitely get to write it off. Um, for finance, I would have to double check. I don't think you specifically write off the miles, but don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on that. I would have to double check. I just, I haven't looked too much into financing just because for me, it didn't make too much sense. So I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't fully look into it. But I know for a fact that with leasing, you do get the, uh, you know, the write off on the miles. Now, depending on your business setup, you know, whether you have an LLC, S Corp, C Corp, partnership, whatever you have, depending on which ones you have, you can set it up so that you know, your business. So specifically for me, in my e-commerce business, I have an S Corp set up. And obviously this is again, no uh, financial advice or any like accountant advice like i would recommend for you guys to speak to a lawyer and an accountant before you decide to set your business up in any type of way but i have an s corp set up and i, I spoke with my accountant and since i have an s corp set up i can set up to have a monthly car allowance for the business since i'll be using it for business use different things like you know marketing uh here and there and you know getting things for the office different things different business use i can have a specific uh, monthly allowance for a car payment and I'm able to write that that specific amount off from my taxes now I, it doesn't it, you can't do it for like a you know Rolls Royce or uh, or for our Lamborghini like specifically that part for the allowance but you there is still ways that you can write those cars off it's just specific, specifically 
for the way that we have it set up and what we were able to do is uh, for a specific portion since it wasn't you know anything too crazy it's only six hundred dollars i'm able to have it as a car allowance for my business so again i went through an accountant to learn about how to set that up specifically so i'd recommend you guys to do the same thing and for the business structure you have to obviously learn from you know a lawyer or online that has experience with setting up different businesses to know the right way to set up yours because again you want to set it up so that you have the best advantage and again for e-commerce and drop shipping there's few different options you guys can set it up but for pretty much any online business same kind of thing with like what kind of car you should get depending on your situation like depending on the setup and the kind of business you're in determines on what kind of uh structure you should have on the way your business is set up so maybe it may make sense for you guys to have a partnership maybe for some of you guys it may make sense to have a c-corp it all depends again so i'd recommend you know going to a lawyer talking to an accountant to figure out what makes sense for your specific setup and business but for my specifically this is what makes sense so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I had, you know, uh, laid out for you guys. This is for me in my personal situation. We kind of went over why it made sense for me to buy a car. If you guys, you know, happen to be in a similar situation, maybe some of you guys are, you know, self-employed or maybe you're under 1099, you know, you may want to consider getting a car, obviously only if you need it. Like you don't want to put yourself in a situation where again, you're trying to just get the car for the luxury at this point. Like, of course I didn't need a BMW. Uh, but I did want to have a nice car, so like, how can I get a nice car and not pay too much from it, too much for it? So leasing made sense for me, but again, it may not make sense for everybody. So what I would recommend for everybody watching, make sure that you know you break down your situation. You know how much you're making, credit score, how much you can afford for a car, uh, how much you drive, all these different factors that go into play, and determine like you know what option makes sense for you. For me personally, again, that made sense at the time. Now. Again, it still kind of makes sense. Maybe later on things might change. So I'll, again, I might have to re, you know, re audit my situation, kind of go through, find out what makes sense, and then determine how I should get my next car. That's what I'm going to be doing when I get the Lambo. Uh, I'm obviously that's one of my goals coming up. But again, for you guys, make sure you go through the process of making sure, you know, you're going through your situation and you're choosing the right option that makes sense for you to get a car. So if you guys got value from this video, make sure you leave me a thumbs up, hit that like button. If you have any questions about anything that we went over, make sure you drop a comment. I'll obviously get back to you guys as soon as I can. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure, make sure you join the VFAM, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.